In this video, we're going to learn how to implement a basic quiz game in C. So our quiz is going to be made up of a series of questions where each question has four possible answers and one correct answer. We'll create a struct to represent our quiz questions. We'll have here type def and struct. We'll call this new type quiz question. Now for the struct members, we'll have car arrays to store the question and possible answers as strings. We'll define preprocessor constants for the length of those car arrays. We'll have here number define and max question 256 and number define max answer as 128. So these will define the maximum length of the question and answers, including the null terminator. So first we'll have a car array struct member called question. It will be of length max question. And this is going to store the actual question text. Then we'll have car arrays to store the possible answers. So we'll have car answer a of length max answer. And we'll have car answer b of length max answer and car answer C of length max answer. And finally, car answer D of length max answer. And we'll have one more member to store the actual correct answer. We'll have car and correct answer. Because we're going to be copying strings and comparing characters, we'll include a couple libraries to help us do those things. Up here, we'll include the string.h library and we'll include the C-type library. Now the quiz is going to have some total number of questions. We'll define that using a preprocessor constant as well. We'll have here number define, and we'll have total questions, and we'll have five questions in our quiz. Then down here in main, we'll declare an array of quiz question structs called quiz of length total questions. And this is going to define our quiz. Now, one thing I should point out is that when declaring our array of structs, we just have quiz question here and not struct quiz question, as you might have seen when working with structs. That's because of the way we use type def here. So we had type def, then we defined the struct, and then we supplied quiz question as a name or a synonym for this type of struct. So we can just use quiz question here, saving us from having to type in struct and then quiz question. Next, we'll create the quiz questions by using the string copy function to set the question and answer members of the structs in this array. So we'll have here string copy and quiz at the index zero dot question. And we'll have what does the plus plus operator do? So here we're using the string copy function from the string.h library to copy this string into the question member of the first quiz question struct in the quiz array. We can then do the same thing for the potential answers. So we'll have here string copy and quiz at the index zero dot answer a, and we'll have add to to a number. Then we can do the same thing for answers B, C, and D. We'll have string copy, quiz at the index zero, dot answer B, and add one to a number. And then we'll have two more possible answers. So we'll have string copy, quiz at the index zero, dot answer C, and we'll have subtract one from a number and then string copy, quiz at the index zero, dot answer D, and we'll have subtract two from a number. Now here, B is the correct answer. We'll also keep track of that. We'll have quiz at the index zero, dot correct answer is equal to B. And that's the data required for a quiz question. We've got the question itself, the four possible answers, and the correct answer. 
Now for the rest of the four quiz question structs in this array, what I'll do is actually paste them in just to save time. So here I'll have paste and you can see we're setting the other four quiz question structs in that array. Then what we'll do is create a loop to go through and give the user each one of these quiz questions. We'll declare a double variable called total correct to keep track of the total number of correct answers that the user gets. We'll also create a variable called answer of type car to store the answers that the user enters. Next, we'll create the loop. We'll have four int i is equal to zero. i is less than total questions and i plus plus. So here we have a loop counter variable i going from zero up until total questions by one. That means i is going to go through each index in our quiz array. We'll use i to help present each quiz question to the user. So first, we'll have printf, and we'll output the question itself. We'll have question, percent %d to output the question number, colon, and then percent %s to output the question text, and a couple new lines. Then we'll have i plus 1 for the question number. So they'll see question 1, question 2, and so on. Then we'll have quiz at the index i dot question to output the actual question to the user. Then we'll output the possible answers. So next we'll have printf and then a for answer a, percent s to output the answer text and a new line. And then we'll have quiz at the index i dot answer a. We'll do the same thing for answers b, c, and d. I'll copy this and paste it. And we'll change this to b, c, and d. And we'll change this over here to b, c, and d. Next, we'll prompt the user to enter their answer. So we'll have printf and then a new line followed by enter answer a, b, c, or d colon. We'll use scanf to store their choice into the answer car variable. So we'll have scanf and then percent %c with and answer. So scanf is going to store the character that's entered by the user into the answer variable. Now one thing we'll do is actually add a space here. The reason why we're going to do that is when the user enters in a character, like let's say B, they're also going to hit enter. When they hit enter, there's going to be a new line character on the standard input buffer. Scanf, if we just have percent %c here, is going to pull off the character B and store it into answer. The problem is there's still going to be a new line character on the input buffer. The next time scanf runs, it's going to see that new line and it's not going to stop for any additional input. It's going to feel like the call to scanf is skipped over on the next loop iteration. But if we put this space here, then before reading in the next character, scanf is going to skip over any wait space characters, such as the new line character. So that's why we put that space character there. Next, we'll check to see if the user got the question right by comparing their answer to the correct answer. So we'll have, if the answer entered by the user is equal to the correct answer in the struct at the member correct answer. Now what we'll do is convert answer to an uppercase letter, just in case the user answered with a lowercase a, b, c, or d character. We'll use the two upper function from the c-type library to do that. We'll have two upper here. So two upper is going to take in the entered character as an argument. And if that character is a lowercase letter, then two upper is going to return the uppercase version of that letter. Otherwise, it's just going to return the same character. We'll then compare that to the correct answer. So as long as we store uppercase letters in correct answer, this is going to work. What we'll do is increment total correct because if the user's answer matches the correct answer, then they got the answer correct. 
will also output correct answer to inform them that they got the answer right. So we'll have a couple new lines and then correct answer. Otherwise, if they didn't get the answer right, we'll output incorrect answer. We'll have printf and then a couple new lines and then incorrect answer. And we should also output the correct answer. So we'll have printf and a couple new lines and then the correct answer was percent C. And we'll output the correct answer with quiz at the index i dot correct answer. Now after each question, we'll also output a few new line characters to separate the questions. So we'll have printf and then three new lines. Then after the whole loop is done, what we'll do is output how many questions they got correct. We'll have printf and then percent %d for the number of questions correct, slash, and then percent %d for the total number of questions, and then we'll have questions answered correctly. And we'll output the total number of correct questions. We'll have int and then total correct. We declared total correct as a double so we can use it to calculate the total percentage of questions answered correctly. But here, we're just trying to output the total number of questions answered correctly as an int with percent %d. So here, we typecast total correct to an int to do that. Then we'll output total questions for the total number of questions in the quiz. Then the last thing we'll do is output the percentage of questions answered correctly. So we'll have printf and then in brackets, we'll output a floating point number with percent %f. We'll output that number with two decimal digits of precision with dot two, and we'll have percent percent to output an actual percent character. So percent is normally used for placeholders like this, but if we actually want to output a percent symbol, we would have percent percent to do that. Then we'll have a couple new line characters, and what we'll output is total correct divided by the total number of questions multiplied by 100. And this should do it. So we'll save, compile, and run the program. And for the first question here, we get what does the plus plus operator do? We'll enter in the correct answer B, and we get correct answer. Now for question two, we have C is a successor of which language? The correct answer is A, the language B. We'll enter in an incorrect answer. We'll enter in B for C++. And now we get incorrect answer. The correct answer was A. Now for question three, we have when is a do while loop condition checked? We'll enter in the correct answer, which is D, after the loop body executes, but we'll enter in lowercase d. And we still get correct answer. So our usage of the two upper function is working. Now for the fourth question, we have what does a pointer variable store? We'll enter in the correct answer c. Then for question five, we get how can we check if x does not equal y in c? We'll enter in the correct answer b. And now we get four out of five questions answered correctly and 80%, which is correct. Now there's many more features we could add to this sort of quiz game, but we'll leave it here. So this is how we can create a quiz game in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.